the Dream 65, the Strymon Iridium. Finally, we're facing off. Boy, does it feel good. First things first, the biggest difference between these two pedals. The Dream 65 is modeled after the vibrato channel of a deluxe reverb, while the Strymon Iridium is modeled after the normal channel of a deluxe reverb. Why does that matter? The vibrato channel for the Dream 65, that had an extra gain stage in it because of the vibrato, and it had a bright cap. So it's brighter and gainier. Strymon Iridium specifically chose the normal channel because it wanted to be a more flat, more pedal-friendly channel. So there's no bright cap. It doesn't have a lot of gain on tap. It just is like a very clean sounding amp. When you're comparing the two, you have to keep that in mind. The Iridium is gonna be darker, less gain. The Dream 65 is gonna be brighter, more gain. Way more gain on tap. So let's compare these clean sounds then. Every other video on this, these two pedals, it's like these cleans don't even sound close. They don't even sound like the same amp. They, they can get them to sound very similar. The thing I hate most, this is 12 o'clock. <laughs> the treble and the bass for the Dream 65. We're using a York Audio Deluxe IR. Now we're gonna use the Flint and the Iridium. I'm using the Flint reverb to give it that sound because a lot of the Dream 65 sound is that verb that's built in, okay? Close. Let me pull back the verb. I pull back the gain, actually. Let's, let's see if this is better. That's pretty close, man. Going back. Probably pull the bass back a bit. A little bit more trouble. I mean, that's pretty close, right? So all these other videos saying like, it's not even the same thing. It actually is the same. You can you know, do some insane kind of settings here, but you will get a very similar sound out of both these pedals if you want to for that like classic Fender clean sound. That should dispel the myth. They can both sound like a Fender Deluxe reverb, okay? Now, the big difference is the gain. <laughs> The gain on this Dream 65 is absolutely insane. Let me show you. Let's turn this bad boy up. Let's just turn it up all the way. And that's on the neck pickup. We switch to the bridge. And that's not even using any boost, which it has three different kinds of boost. So let's go back to the Iridium and look at that gain. This is as much gain you can have while it's still in like a scooped kind of tone. Now that's the gain all the way up, right? Look, all the way. This is the bridge. And what are the other great benefits of the Iridium, the mid knob and the mid knob, I, I'm sure all of you know this, but if you don't know this, the mid knob changes it from all the way down, blackface tones, all the way up, tweed tones, and that adds gain. So there's your gain and a lot of reverb too, sorry, but there's your gain, right? But it doesn't sound like that really fizzy gain that you would get from a, a, a really pumped tube amp. Now let's add some boost. So the stock boost is a clean boost. So let's put it at 50%. And I'm pretty sure we just add. 
it adds mostly volume. I've, I've tried it and I've pumped it. It does add a little bit of gain. It says it does not in the manual, but I'm pretty sure it does add some gain. Just a little bit. And then all the way up. does sound like it adds a little bit of compression too, which is kind of cool. You can set it up so that the second switch activates boost or activates any of the parameters with inside the Dream. Dream is not MIDI functional though. So um, if you're a MIDI guy, it's not the pedal for you. The only connections you can have is a Bluetooth and I'll tell you why that drives me nuts. Now let's go to the lead setting. This, um, this is apparently Steve Lukather used this and it's a, you, it removes the break cap. It was a very popular mod back in the day and it adds some warmth to it, but you still get that gain stage and you get a little oomph. Let's push it. All the way up, all the way up. It's a lot. Like that's more than usable. Actually, I mean, that's not really usable. Like if you showed up to a gig and that was your overdrive sound, people would be, your band wouldn't like that. So if you pull it back a bit on volume, it does clean up. So you can't clean it up with your volume knob, which is cool. So, and then you go to the D mod, and this mod apparently is um, the one that uh, Steve Ray Vaughn had. So it adds some mids, right? So this is without. And this is with it halfway up. I don't love the sounds of these boosts because they really... You don't really have a lot of control over the tone shaping of it. It might be good in like a studio setting. Like a home studio. <laughs> but it's not something that I would use for live. It's more of like a cool throwback to be like, this is what they used to do. And the weird thing about this last boost, this Detex, is that it's authentic and that um, when they did do this boost back in the day, it would turn off the vibrato circuit in the amp. And so like we did it here too. And this is where uh, I'm kind of on the fence about like a faithful recreation. I'm like, okay, if that was like a technical limitation, do we have to add that if it's all digital? Like it's a digital pedal, right? It's a great pedal, but it's digital. It doesn't make sense to me to add that limitation. Like just like back in the day, I'm like, yeah, but if I wanted that, I would have just got that. And like, why can't I have vibrato with this? Because it's not faithful. I'm like, it's not faithful at all. It's a pedal. It's not an amp. It's it's the hundred percent. It's not a faithful thing in any way. That's okay. That's fine. Imagine if they said this instead. Back in the day, like you wouldn't have normally been able to do that, but. You know, flip a switch in your app or whatever, and you can have vibrato and that cool boost at the same time. We're paying homage to the past, but we're saying, hey, it's the future now. Would you like to try? The Iridium doesn't have a boost, so I'm adding a boost, and that boost is an EP booster. It's a little bit of a darker boost, um, but it pairs well with the Iridium. <laughs> and I actually prefer it if you pull back the gain on the Iridium. That sounds cool. Without the boost. If I'm using a boost live, it's to get more mids or it's to get um just be able to cut through the mix a little bit better which is why like 
this boost more than the built-in boost there. The built-in boost on the Dream 65 does feel like it's, it, it doesn't feel like it pushes it enough. Let's hear the EP with the Dream, okay? That sounds good. But it still is adding a lot of gain. And that's the clean boost. Clean boost off. EP boost on. This boost. Although it's a cool feature, having a separate boost pedal is preferable, I think, to any guitarist I would know. You kind of want to know what kind of boost you're adding in there, right? You want to have control over the parameters. You don't want to have linked into Bluetooth or whatever, right? Let's talk about the vibrato because I have issues with this. So to get to the vibrato, you got to flip this up and then you can adjust vibrato. And these two knobs now, formerly your treble and boost, become your vibrato, this being speed and this being intensity. That's intensity. And that's speed, right? I'm like, okay, cool, that sounds good. I switch it back. And now I want it to come back, but now I gotta, as soon as you start moving those knobs, it'll trigger like, oh, do you want it here? So you gotta remember where you were before if you wanted to keep those tone settings. And if you wanna go back and change my vibrato, now I gotta go back in and I gotta change it. Uh, I can't remember what it was last time. So that is a limitation that to me is frustrating. It's cool. I understand you wanted to put all the features from the deluxe reverb into this pedal and they all are in there and they're in there in an authentic way. And that is very cool. And Universal Audio is a great company to do great things. This isn't a dig on them. That is just um, a feature for me that is not ideal, right? That like the functionality of that makes it frustrating. Now, a way around that is you can save the setting. As soon as you set your vibrato, you can save it. And the app saves every single setting that you put in it so that's cool and it talks bluetooth to your phone it adds more things to think about which are can be frustrating for a guy like me let's try to recreate that sound i can rec recreate that here okay Pretty close, right? That's pretty close. And now I know what you're thinking. Oh, so you need to buy another $300 pedal to get it to sound like the dream. Yes and no. But before we get into that, let's look at how these pedals handle overdrive. Every guitarist I know has like 50 overdrive pedals, right? But there's only three that they really use or two that they really use. These Both these pedals take overdrives well, but they take them in a different way. And again, it's based on the channel. The Dream 65 gets really overdriven and really trebly quickly, while the Iridium gets darker and kind of holds the bottom end together a little bit better than the Dream 65, as you would expect. That's the Dream 65, clean. Now we're adding a sparkle drive from Voodoo Labs, which is a, a Tube Screamer clone. Iridium clean. Here's a sparkle drive.
both sound good, just different flavors. Let's do the Super Overdrive. Here's Clean. Is a Super Overdrive. Stram and Iridium with Super Overdrive. change a little bit of the tone here back the gain and now i have more room for a little more drive here That's a huge difference in taking overdrives because of like what it's trying to create, right? The dream is trying to create that overdriven side, the vibrato channel, while the iridium is creating that normal channel side, that that kind of nice bass, a nice palatable bass that's really predictable. One of them isn't better than the other at taking pedals. It just takes your sound in different directions, okay? So it depends on what you want. If you want an overdriven sound, the dream's for you. If you want a more flat and stable static sound, the iridium's for you. They both can provide really fendery sounds, but iridium can also provide a really flat, responsive sound and a really easy pedal platform sound. This whole time we've been using a York Audio Oxford, the original deluxe speaker IR. But let's go through these stock speakers because these stock speakers are good, but it's also a drawback. The dream, you get six total speakers and that's it. You cannot load any other speakers into this pedal. You can load other speakers into the Iridium. You can load three for each preset. So three presets for the round setting, but you can load anything you want in there and you can load stereo ones too. You can only pair them with the Dream if you're do using like a Cab M pedal from Two Notes or using software in the studio. Uh, you can't just have it in the pedal. So let's go through these stock speakers. They are really good speakers. Even though you're limited to only the six of them, they're fantastic. And they cover almost all the sonic palettes you could expect. This is the GB25. That's my favorite one, <laughs> I guess you can't tell. This is the Oxford, this is the original speaker that used to come in the deluxe reverb. Much brighter, right? Another great speaker, nice and bright. Great for kind of percussive stuff like that. It's cool. This is the EV12.
That one's good too. It's got a really nice high end, top end, and the bass is the bass is really good on that one. This is a GB25. This is an Oxford, but from a Fender Super 4x10. They said this is good for lo-fi. And you can tell it's got that really kind of notched sound. Here's the EV12, this is off of a Fender Twin. six of those speakers sound great and they make sense and they would fit within whatever you're doing right whether it's live or recording it really just comes down to the functionality of the irs if you have other irs you cannot put them in this pedal those are the speakers you're going to use they're good speakers but that's it okay so the last thing that's really different is the bass response the bass response on the iridium really gets full really gets wide the bass response on the dream 65 uh, is how a bass would work on a deluxe reverb. It kind of like drives the amp and it doesn't really get full and wide. That's bass on the middle, right? Let's push it. You kind of hear it there. But it's not really... Um, it doesn't really get very wide, and that's okay. It, it, that fits in the mix perfectly, but it's different than the bass works on an Iridium. Listen to this. This is bass on the Iridium. Now we'll push it up. That's very low. In fact, it's so low that I've tracked bass guitars through the Strymon Iridium round setting, and it's come out great. No one's complained. I mean, that sounds very wide. They did a great job modeling that bass. Now, I'm not sure if that's what a deluxe sounded like, but that's a lot of bass on tap. So you got to keep that in mind. So when you buy the pedal, you got to get this app, right? And then your pedal shows up on the app. You click on it, and it connects via Bluetooth and you gotta register it and it's easy to register. It's like two clicks to register and you get the extra speakers. This is the, my problem with um, Bluetooth technology. It works until it doesn't. When it doesn't, it really doesn't. That's a situation you don't wanna be in. It's not very professional. Now on the app, they have a bunch of presets. I'm sure you've seen it online and it automatically changes the presets as you select them, right? So here I am, clean, and I select the preset fuzzy friend. hands-free right kind of cool kind of cool that it's hands-free there's two more 
Greases I thought were really cool here. This is from Tim Pierce, Single Coil Neck Grit Sweet Spot. <laughs> Vintage Trem in Verb. Now, the problem is like you're taking out your phone and you're looking at your phone while you're trying to play your amp. I mean, it's like, I don't like this interfering with this, right? I don't want a smart pedal. I don't want a smart fridge. I don't want a smart house. I don't want smart lights. I'm not smart. Why should all these other things be smarter than me? <laughs> but really, when you add um, connectivity to a professional rig, things can get really hairy really quickly. One thing you don't take into account, on stage, let's, let's assuming you're using wireless guitars and you're using uh, MIDI and you have some other wireless, you have wireless headphones too, right? You have all sorts of different bands going back and forth. Not to mention all the security and like walkie-talkie people and the communication stuff. You have a lot of different interference going through the air, right? There's a lot of different wavelengths getting thrown around. And now you add one more, your phone connecting to your gear, your rig, right? Your signal path. And everyone knows that your phone is a conductor for sound. You could bring your phone over to your speaker or your phone or your amp or your guitar. You're going to get some weird feedback. So like that to me, I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to have to touch my phone to get things going on my pedal. Some kids love that and I'm happy for them. Use it. It's not for me. I don't want to have to scroll and be like, what kind of preset do I want today? It's like the idea of scrolling to select something to make a noise. I don't like that, right? And that's a big, that's a big one for me. That's, that's, a, that's That might be the biggest drawback for me about this pedal. Do I need to buy all these pedals here just to get this one pedal in the Dream? Yes and no, right? So the Dream has re built-in reverb and it's a lot of reverb. It's got a built-in boost. It's got a built-in vibrato, great. The vibrato is hidden in the secondary function. The boost doesn't really do what I would want it to boost. And the reverb is just a spring reverb. You don't have control over dwell. You don't have control over tone. And you didn't have the original amp anyway. So like, I get it. That is a faithful recreation. But for someone like me and for a lot of guitarists I know, you want control over all those other parameters. So that's why the flint comes in handy. Now with the flint, I get to cover not only the reverb, but three reverbs and the vibrato and three different kinds of vibrato. And I can change the direction, reverb into vibrato or vice versa. I'm not just spending another 300 bucks to make up for a spring reverb. I'm actually using the flint to get all sorts of different sounds from it too. I actually did a video on it. Um, and I'm shocked at how many tones I could get out of that thing. The Rhydium does have room built in. This is the dry. And here's uh, the large room setting. The room setting can kind of pass, but it's not a reverb. I do wish they kind of changed that to a reverb and like a firmware update, but they probably won't. Okay, so reverb, I got reverb and I got vibrato covered here, right? I don't have a built-in boost, but actually I don't want a built-in boost. I like having a different kind of boost because I want, again, to control the parameters. The Dream 65 will go right into overdrive so quickly. And that's cool. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's just like not what I would want as a musician. I mean, you heard that. As soon as I turned on the drive from these other pedals, it like smashed it, right? It made it really, really gainy. I use my Iridium as like the tonal kind of backdrop 
for all my revival drive tones too. And I'm going to do another video on that, but it takes the revival drive perfectly. Whereas the dream, it still sounds like a deluxe reverb, which is cool, but the Iridium can kind of, it's like a chameleon. It can kind of become whatever amp you want it to sound like. So all this talk about tone, but let's see what it sounds like in a mix. This is a quick backing track I did where I did rhythm and I did lead and mixed them both in. I heard a lot of complaints about like, hey, can you actually mix the Dream 65? And I agree, like, yeah, it was a little bit harder to mix in. And this isn't like a pro mix or anything. But if I'm trying to think of I'm, if I'm a sound guy or if I got to do something quick for a client, I probably wouldn't use the Dream. It was just a little bit harder to shape and get the sound and the articulation that I wanted over the Iridium. Here it goes. So do you have any preference on that? I mean, it wasn't like super pro mix. I just threw it together quickly, but it does give you some implications though on like how much post you're gonna be doing. What are you looking for this in this pedal? What are you trying to get done? And that is the entire point and what every other review missed about these pedals and comparing them. It's not, which should you buy? It's where are you in your career? If you're a beginner guitarist and you don't have any gear, the dream is a great, pedal. Let's say you have no pedals. You don't have a reverb pedal. You don't have a vibrato pedal. You don't have a boost pedal. You don't have an overdrive pedal. The Dream 65 can give you all those things in one. And that's great. That's cool. But I have a lot of pedals and a lot of musicians and guitarists, know they already have all these pedals. They have the tones that they want, but what they want is like a pedal platform. And the Iridium provides that. It assumes you have your reverb pedal. It assumes you already have your drive and your boost pedals. And so it just gives you that platform and a very great interactive platform. It's easy to record, easy to take live. So in my estimation, the ceiling is much higher with your rhythm because you can do the Marshall, you can do the Vox, you can load in your own IRs, it, the tone shaping is there, it can take pedals really well. With the Dream 65, the ceiling is here. You're getting a deluxe reverb and it's a really good creation of a deluxe reverb vibrato channel. But it's not gonna be anything other than that. So the ceiling is right there. The entry is right in though. Once you walk in, once you plug it, it will sound exactly like a deluxe reverb. That's what you're weighing here. You're not weighing one versus the other. You're weighing where are you in your journey. Again, if you don't have any gear, the Dream 65 is a great starting pedal. If you have the Strymon, should you get this? I say no, it's not, you don't need to get it if you already have the Strymon. The Strymon sounds great. If you have the right IRs, and you have the right settings. Let's say you have a bunch of gear, you don't have an amp modeler, and you're already an intermediate to professional guitarist. Would you want the Dream? Uh, maybe. Like the Dream 65 could could be your good backup pedal um, if your amp fails or your backup amp fails or whatever it is, like whatever you have as your backup system. Would I use it as my lead system? Probably not because the, the Bluetooth thing and the MIDI switching thing, it's not a great main pedal. And lastly, for the home studio guy, if you can't crank your deluxe reverb and you don't have any amp modeling software, this could work for you. I don't think it's a bad pedal. 
But the Strymon Iridium, in my opinion, is superior in every way. Um, yes, it doesn't have that functionality, but it doesn't have that for a reason. And I think when you invest in like a Strymon strategy for your pedal board, you get a lot more bang for your buck, whether that's live or in the studio. So after hearing all that, you're thinking, well, Alex, why'd you buy it? I bought it to review it and I realized I don't need it. So I'm going to give it away to one of you guys. I'm going to hold a contest. I'm going to have the details out in the next video about what it's going to be. If you're having problems with your Strymon Iridium, how it sounds, I made a playlist going over all the different tones, all the different settings, how it takes reverbs, how it takes, you know, overdrives and all that kind of stuff. The IRs I like to use, York Audio, wink, wink. So check it out. It's good. It's helpful. A lot of people have been saying that it's helped them enjoy their Iridium even more and has cured their gas syndrome. Thanks for watching.